and you're looking at the trailer for Not Without My Daughter 1991 movie. Now I, I did a video on it earlier and it cut me off at 15 so I'm trying to follow up on what I was saying then. Okay, uh, what I wanted to go into here is a lot of times when you're in an e abusive relationship people ask you why didn't you leave now I can speak for myself and even though I am a professional counselor I can't speak for everyone but I can tell you that a lot of the reasons why or one of the major reasons why people don't leave is their children or in this case in this movie her child and that is the reason why this movie always had a always had a feeling of I truly understand this movie because this woman is in a totally foreign environment now by saying that I don't mean just because she's an American in a foreign country I mean anytime you're dealing with a narcissist and you're not one you are in a foreign territory you don't understand this person you're looking at them like you look like a human being but you I don't know what you are and it might be it would definitely be a lot easier to get up and say shoot like I said before I used to think this nigga crazy I need to get out of this but when you have a child with one of them which is one of the reasons why they want to have children with you you think it's because oh he loves me so much he wants to settle down and I don't necessarily just mean he because they are female narcissists too but my spouse my mate loves me so much they want to have a family with me and they want us to build together no they don't they want to destroy you and they know that if you are any kind of a human being you are looking out for that child so the answer to why don't they leave because half of them is in the future part of the reason why you have children is so that you carry on into the future whether you are conscious of that or not that is that child is a part of you that carries on so you will sometimes you will do without you will put yourself in danger to protect protect that child or children and that's what happened in this movie now it is a normal and natural thing for a child to love both of their parents it's weird if they don't but that also is something that will be used against you opponent I want you to consider is that there is a genetic component to narcissism that is if one of your parents is a narcissist there's a chance that you might be one or if you have a child with a narcissist there is a chance your child might be a narcissist so you could wind up where you're spending a lot of your time defending and protecting someone who might grow up to be a person who is as they say a thorn in your side now this is something people don't like to think about but it is another one of those it's like gravity whether you like to think about it or not it's there and I believe that anything that is there you need to recognize it I want you to consider Matthew chapter 10 Okay, there Matthew chapter 10 and verse 21 and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death and the father the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death okay now this is what Yeshia is telling his disciples that this is what is going to be like so that child that you spent your time your effort your whatever you had to defend to protect could possibly because the reason why you need to defend and protect this child against their opposite parent is because the opposite parent is is presenting a threat to both of you so 
let's say that that parent, opposite parent, is a narcissist. Well, if you had a child with him, you might be giving birth to a narcissist. And a narcissist, by definition, cannot and will not be loyal to you. They will not be loyal to anybody, but they are especially offended by impasse. So let's say you did your part. You did what you were supposed to do as a parent. That child could grow up and totally go against you. That is simply the risk you're taking being a parent because while you are parenting at least initially with this narcissist you may not recognize this is a narcissist so you may even get a few good years or months or something out of this person before they simply turn on you well it's the same with the children of narcissists no matter how much you love them they may they may wind up being someone who is not there for you now this is an article it's a pretty old article it came out in 2018 in the courier tribune but this compare this to what the savior already told you this is the painful plight of abandoned parents by Lori baker suggs Imagine rearing your children to adulthood only to lose them. If this thought provokes an emotional response in you while reading about it, you can only ima imagine what it's like to endure it. The truth is that it happens in our society more than most people realize. You do not have to be a bad parent or an elderly parent to be abandoned by your adult children. I know many great parents to which it has happened, and they are living their worst nightmare. Had it has also happened to people in my own family who were very good parents and loved the children and sacrificed greatly to provide for their needs and wants. My own parents were not perfect parents, but they were very good parents, and I know they did their personal best to raise me to be a productive member of society. I also knew the person that I would become after I was grown was completely in my own hands, and I would take personal responsibility for myself. Abandoning them would be akin to cutting off one of my legs. They are the reason I have my life, and this fact alone is deserving of respect. Now, I'm not going to read the whole article, but this is something most people don't really know about who it hasn't happened to. And the point is, the point I'm trying to make is that you could have been as good a parent as you knew how to be. You provided for your children. To me, if you're still alive, right now it's because somebody cared enough about you to give you food clothing and shelter and i feel that you owe that person or those people if you cannot be loyal to them my thought is you cannot be loyal to anyone and what is the point of having someone around who cannot be loyal of what use are they get back to matthew 10 the savior con continues at verse 34 think not that I am come to send peace on earth I came not to cease but a sword for I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes shall be they of his own household he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me that's not to say that you aren't supposed to love your children. No, that they are your responsibility. They're, you have an obligation to them. I even tend to think that if something happens and you have to give your child up for up into the system for whatever reason, well, I think that as soon as you get up on your feet, you need to get your child back and you need to pay for the time somebody else paid for them or did things for them because they are your responsibility and they are your future. And I do believe each child is a possible gift from the Most High. But what do you do if you find that you have, for whatever reason, made the mistake of procreating with the narcissist well 
we do have an example of what to do there too. This is Genesis 4. And this is the Heavenly Father's response to Cain after he murdered his brother. And I think even there they're giving you a heads up on what a narcissist will do to their siblings or whoever it is that they happen to be jealous of at the moment. And it reads, let's see. Starting at 11. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. So basically what it's telling you is, if you've got a grown child who has shown you, because it says you shall know them by their fruits, don't think that, don't think so highly of yourself that you figure, well, I could not possibly give birth to a monster because you could. I mean, you children are not clones. They come from you and another, another entity, another person. So you might be trying to do the right thing, and you, but you might not find out that this person that you had this child with was not trying to do the right thing. And even then, the child could take after grandparents. You don't, or the kid just, the child could just decide to just be evil. Either way, you will know them by their fruits. And this is telling you, this is what you do once you find out what they really are. You put them out. Now, I'm not talking about a 12 year old. I'm talking about an adult, someone who can make decisions and make it their own living. You don't continue to have them around you because if they are that monstrous, don't think that they won't turn on you. Now you might feel like some people have said about putting a narcissist out, a narcissist child. Well, they'll just go do something to someone else. You can put them out and pray that the Heavenly Father not allow that to happen, but the people who are closest to you are the ones who are most likely to know your schedule, to know your your flaws, to know your weaknesses. So they are much more dangerous to you than they are out there to the general public. And the general public is much more likely to be wary of a stranger than a family member. But in any case, you leave everything that you cannot handle yourself to prayer. So I know that this might be what where this might not be where you thought that I would continue with not without my daughter. But the point is, if you have a angry narcissistic spouse, you might have an angry narcissistic child. That does not mean that you look at your kids with your children with a no, with a squinted eye, like, yeah, you're probably going to be just like your, your mom, or you're probably going to be just like your dad, because they might not be. They have two parents. They have grandparents. They have great-grandparents. And above all that, they have personal choice. But it does mean that, as the Savior said, if you find out this child is just, they're just rough. I mean, no matter what I do, well, if you let them stick around, and you have siblings, they have siblings who are not like them, they will be the first people they'll pray on. The second people they'll pray on will be the empathic, empathic parent. Okay, if you have a narcissistic parent and an empathic parent and a narcissistic child, that child is going to turn on the empathic parent. They'll do that after they have turned on the empathic sibling because they're going by who has the most strength and if you still don't decide well you know what you have to go somewhere well there is something that also is not getting much press and that is this abuse for a while they were talking about that a lot and the thing is people separate all these different things there's elder abuse domestic violence there's a workplace abuse. All of these things are being done by the same type of person. 
It's a narcissist. Now, you can say sociopaths.